Social activist Jaya Gaskia joins us now for more on the Freedom Rally. What was meant to be a rally to call for the release of Shore and others along the line turned violent because of, do we call it a clash of interest now between your group and uh, another? What is your reaction to how events unfolded in Abuja today? Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. I think it's very clear. What happened today in Abuja is that we are beginning to see uh, a dictatorship beginning to bear its fangs. Uh, what we saw was that we were there. Uh, we had announced that we were going to have this rally 14 days ago, and uh, we kept to our words, and it was a peaceful rally. We were going to make demands and present our demands to the National Human Rights Commission. Uh, we were already there, and then we saw people bust in uh, from uh, uh, two buses, uh, uh, RFI buses, uh, came in, and um, uh, these guys were obviously on high on drugs. Uh, they were very aggressive, uh, and then they, 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 they were chanting, Sai Baba, Sai Baba, and they came towards us. And um, when we noticed that they were moving too close to us and they were becoming too aggressive, uh, we took it upon ourselves to actually approach the, uh, uh, the security operatives who were around. And we went to them uh, to negotiate that they should form a block between the two uh, protest groups. Because, I mean, everybody has a right to protest, so nobody is saying that they should not protest. But we are saying that nobody has a right to attack other people when they are protesting. So we made that plea to the security uh, personnel who were around. Uh, we were ignored for a while, and the outcome was that we were actually attacked. And then one of the co-conveners was uh, uh, chased around and, and beaten up. But it, it's obvious that what was happening was an attempt to prevent the presentation of the demands to the National Human Rights Commission but to also prevent uh, uh, the, the rally from happening. Okay, but as it turned out, eventually you were able to hold the rally and then present yes. the demand to the Human Rights Commission. Now, this case is in court. Although, yes, the court had to declare that Shure should be released and all that. But at the moment, the judge who is even handling this case has a return the case file to the chief judge. And uh, that implies that a new judge has to be assigned to that case. So how do you now see this? Because it therefore means there could just be a further elongation or prolongation of his stay in the custody of the DSS? It's very obvious. There have been previous rulings and um, those bill conditions were met. Uh, and if you saw that the demands that we made were actually very broad demands and we're asking because uh, this is not just about Omo Yele Shure. It's just the, the fact that Shure is, the, uh, is at present uh, the clearest manifestation of what we are seeing as a uh, violation of human rights. We also noted in our demands that there are uh, more than 100, uh, between 100 and 200 people who are illegally detained in uh, DSS facilities across the country. And we are asking for all of these people and individuals illegally detained and political prisoners, we are asking that they should all be released uh, unconditionally. We are asking okay. that court orders should be obeyed. And so in the case of Omo Yele Shure, there are existing, pre-existing court orders. Okay. They should be obeyed. He was released into the custody of his lawyers. They should allow that to happen because, I mean, right. uh, 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 failing uh, his presentation, then they can do that. But okay, if they then. don't meet these demands, uh, Nigerians are not really going to uh, just wait and, and, uh, All right, and then be it, looking. It's a good way to end the conversation at this time. Social activist Jaye Gaskia, many thanks for joining us on TVC News at 10.